All right, it's Monday, another week. Got planting this week, hopefully food forest project work, the harvesting, washing, uh, the normal routine. Hope everybody had a good Christmas. We got more rain coming. So just like every week, I'll probably point at the rain gauge and say we got an inch or two of rain. Seems to be the way things are happening this year. Yep. All right, so thanks to the nine inches of rain in two weeks, what's another two inches of rain? No big deal. It hasn't rained at all. Second time we've been out to do this. I put the sump pump in the basement, pump it out. It's raining so hard that it just can't keep up. The drains can't keep up. So, <sighs> like five or six inches of rain just tonight. That's how much rain just happened. Yeah, we got a tropical storm warning. It's the rain from the hurricane uh, remnants. So, two inches of rain last night. How much rain do you think we got? Uh, probably six inches at least. That was yeah. crazy. Yep, six inches. Wow. It's completely full. That's six inches in two days. The extra rainfall we got is almost equivalent to what Seattle gets in rain on average a year. Plenty of challenges on top of the regular 2020 to deal with the weather and to basically grow vegetables in a temperate rainforest. Last week was extremely cold, a lot of rain again. Yeah, 16 degrees Christmas morning and it, was, it didn't even get above freezing during the day and it was windy for all that. So there was some damage in the plants. I think overall we did okay. It takes a while for the plants to actually show their issues when it's this cold. What's up, George? Morning. I am um, planting pak choy and tatsoi and kohlrabi where the cone cabbage was. So we're just leaving the weed mat there and we chopped off the cone cabbage and now I'm just going through and kind of like digging up under the root and putting the transplant in there. Hey buddy. Got some damage there. So the row cover actually blew off this bed and it was exposed to really cold temperatures. They were frozen solid. Uh, covered it up when we could and yeah, it was a little too late. Flipping beds, amendments, uh, getting transplants in, direct seeding, all that stuff's what we're gonna do today. Okay, we had a pretty productive day yesterday with getting beds flipped and stuff planted. And so that kind of frees up some time today and it's a holiday week too, so we're working a little slower this week, so it's really not that big of a deal. It's also like winter, winter. So I'm gonna work on the food forest today. My plan is to get all this junk here uh, removed and out of the way. I'm gonna try and expose this mimosa tree. It's a nitrogen fixer. So I want to keep that one. So that requires uh, to get up in this small pine and take that off by hand in the tree and take these tag trees out. There's also this pine that grew into this oak. It's fused together up there. So I want to get rid of this pine and see what that oak limb looks like, if it's worth keeping or, or you know, or what. And for future food forest uh, videos, like for the rest of this pine area here, uh, there's a guy that worked at Bartlett, which is the company that I worked for. And he ended up going to the city and retiring. Um, he did tree work. He was a crew leader, pretty sure. And uh, he's starting a market farm in Rock Hill, South Carolina. So he's going to come up and 
work here one day a week, uh, bring his tractor a few days. That way we can use the grapple on this stuff and just really, and then stack up all the wood and really get a lot done in a short amount of time. I was gonna have a nice productive day of tree work here, but welcome to owning a business. The cooler went down a day. The AC unit is just like done for, and and it's December, so it took me a while to find one, and we just got it in, and it's cooling stuff down. It's a pain. It's 150 pounds. At first, I thought it was an electrical issue, but neighbor Phil came over and tested it, and was the bear of the reality that. It's just wore out. Um, that's just how they're made, I guess. That was bound to happen uh, anytime we knew it. And actually, like two months ago, I was like, oh, I shouldn't, I need to get another AC unit for when that one breaks. Thankfully, it was colder today and it didn't really cause much of an issue, but hopefully, this one works. Uh, <laughs> I have to like remount some stuff and redo the insulation around the window. And ah, it's annoying too, man. Like on holiday time. That's the way it goes. I guess at least we were here, not traveling, visiting family or something. That would have that would have really been no good to to be out of state and have that go down. Here's the old unit. Here's the new one. It's working. The important thing is was that we got that fixed right away. Got it back down to temperature. This is a cool bot. This will use to cool the cooler with. And so this thing has a heater that heats up the thermostat on the air conditioner, tricking it to run longer. And this measures the um, air of the cooler and then tells, or I guess it would let the heater cable um, cool down so that the AC will shut off, therefore keeping it at a temp. So we're just testing it. Um, I'm gonna keep this at, is it, greens is 37, right? I think is the rule for it, yeah. So we'll set this to 37 and monitor this tonight, see how it does. But I think it'll be fine. What do you think? You think it'll be fine? Hopefully. With all that work we just did. I know. That thing is so, so heavy. So heavy. <laughs> Ideally with a cool bot you would use an LG. Um, but kind of an emergency situation and I found that one and it was like $340 cheaper. It was just like sitting there at Lowe's in the back of the store. So normally that's a $700 air conditioner unit. So we'll just uh, make it work. So the old cooler went through the hottest summer on record ever for North Carolina since they've been recording weather. Yeah. And this year is right around the wettest year ever. But uh, it's pretty big. It's For our size cooler, you need a 24,000 BTU. If you go to CoolBot's website, they'll tell you everything you need to know about it. But we should probably build a real base instead of this cedar stump. This is the professional right here. It worked for two years, so it should work for another two years. All right. Professional. Carpentry. Hey. Up, George. <laughs> Trying to organize. Pre-orders. Yeah, There's we a had lot. a lot this week too. So everyone's getting back at it. Mm -hmm. All right, Wednesday and Thursday, uh, New Year's Eve, whatever. Uh, we just came through and flipped some beds here with uh, Emma and Janie and Leela and Craig too. That's Janie and Leela's little brother. And yeah, we got these, we got these ready, got some bed slip in another tunnel. It's kind of the same routine every week, you know, harvest things and then go back behind there and plant new things. Today's just gonna be a rainy day all day. It's cold 
but go figure, it's raining again this week. Janie and Emma did a really good job helping me uh, flip this tunnel. We took out salad, we took out kohlrabi that we had harvested, cropped it out, planted new stuff. Then we got these leaves down here. So this is a bed of carrots that's germinating. That's arugula, fennel, fennel. There's carrots back there. Uh, this is all arugula here. Uh, I coined this new term for the beds and stuff like this, and it's professional. So I was joking that I was saying that this looked professional when they were doing it. So like, it's fresh and it's professional. Maybe it will stick, I don't know. The amount of rain this year has just been crazy. Gonna try and do two at a time. Hey guys, Adam's here from Dirtcraft. Just dropped off the potting mix, and I'm gonna let him tell you guys about his business again in case anybody hasn't seen the older clip. All right, I gotta go get potting soil today. So, me and Booger are gonna head up to Dirtcraft Organics in the mountains, and uh, I'll show you guys his setup and uh, business. It's pretty cool. sense yeah I don't know have it right here all right guys I'm with Adam from Dirtcraft and uh, I'm gonna let him tell you guys about his business hey my name's Adam with Dirtcraft Organics we're a uh, peat free potting soil company based out of Asheville North Carolina we do uh, cocoa and compost based living soils um, potting soils for your seed starting for your container growing raised bed um, horticultural media all of the above Look us up, dirtcraftorganics.com. I'll leave links in the description for Adam's business. I need to a hat. Oh, sweet. I just I appreciate you guys. Uh, you too, so. Is that the new expansion? Hey guys, if you get a chance, check out Adam's Instagram, their website, and if you're looking for potting soil and you're in this area or either anywhere in Appalachia, I think, kind of he delivers. So don't quote me on this, but I think you can group together things. Um, but he's a cool dude and willing to work with people and get this awesome potting mix to other growers. You can see that it's all spread out in the driveway and they're like 600 pounds each. So got this hooked up here and it's the same thing I did back in the summer. It's just on the carabiner. So I drive forward, it pulls us back and then just do that for all four. And that's it, leave them sit there to earth and then put a tarp over it, and then we're probably gonna blow through this pretty quick with the spring growing, so. These are the same knots I've showed in previous videos. Um, to do all this too, so. Okay, got all these guys moved out of the way. 
Uh, sorry about the lens. It's it's raining, so really shouldn't have my camera out in this weather, but uh, that's pretty cool stuff. And hopefully that helps somebody out. You don't need a tractor to move all that heavy material. Okay, the heaviest rain is getting here now, so coming through and venting these tunnels, trying to make sure that these guys don't develop fungal issues. And got a half inch of rain today. Heaviest stuff's just getting here now, though, so whatever. At this point, I guess it's on the 2021 uh, rain gauge and not 2020. Got another half inch of rain last night. We're getting ready for the market right now and double checking all these tunnels and making sure we're all good out here before I leave. And then, yeah, be back later. Okay, back from the markets and they went pretty good. Uh, it's supposed to rain again tonight, so we're gonna have to deal with that again. So tomorrow we're gonna go and see Ross and Tiffany, that's who we work with in South Carolina. And they're over by uh, Albemarle, North Carolina right now. Huge farm project, it's gonna be cool. Yeah. It's gonna be cool to see them too. Yeah, haven't seen and them in... Well, since, Ross was here I think Pete since here. New Year's I haven't seen Tiffany. Yeah, no, your Last birthday. Year. Yeah. Your birthday. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, this like 600 acre permaculture farm project. It's pretty, it's really neat. Mm -hmm. big big projects not little mm -hmm. stuff like big stuff yeah so it's a different scale but yeah Ross has a really good eye for all that stuff yeah the water management mm -hmm. and uh, native plants and the history of the land is crazy so it should be a really cool video yeah yeah thanks for watching very good so those pits right there especially when they're new and young that tip right there it's like asparagus it's a uh, high protein the deer usually nip them, and um, and then I nip the deer. Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> but this stuff is uh, that's good stuff. You want to start at your highest elevation. So like, it's like up on that ridge, your highest over there. You want to start solving your water problems, and then you come over here, and you're actually your roof is actually your highest elevation system. Okay. So your gutter is the start of your water management system. Huh. Okay. And you go from gutter downspouts. And then you wanna, your goal should be to take water in your high spots and make it travel as long as possible through your system. The longer the route is, the more capacity, the more water you have, the more you grow. The more carbon, the more, the more trees you can grow, the more lettuce, the more nuts, the more fruits, the, the more water. And if it's passive, so it's rainfall, then it's, it's not something you're paying to pump or fixing a pump or buying piping or digging a trench for the pipe like yeah and I mean and a pipe and a pump will break or fill or crack or something at some point in time uh, gravity is gonna work no matter what so like you plan your system to function off of gravity and then add in your pumps and stuff for redundancy right. like you want to have three four options for water if you can but the most important is a passive system built into your landscape um, so come off your roof come down you essentially need to take this water from your this system, draining off. You want to drain it away. You don't want it at the foundation of your home, and send it. And we're I'm about level with the corner of the house right here. Okay. So there, and somewhere in here, theoretically, I would take your water to this point in here. And you, I mean, like you can think about having like a little pond. Over 